In this video, I'm going to create an Apple checkout bot that can buy iPhones straight from Apple's website within seconds. Now, if there being a nationwide chip shortage, the new iPhone coming out in September, and everyone and their mom wanting an Apple iPhone, this iPhone will have very limited stock, and iPhones in general around the world are being extremely hard to get, like females. And no one wants to sit there and wait for an iPhone to come in stock and then click all those buttons on Apple's website. So we're going to automate that entire process right here, right now. Now, I will say this is an attempt because this is Apple we're talking about, so their security is expected to be top notch. So let's go on this journey and create an Apple checkout bot together. So this is how the flow is going to work. First, we're going to find a browser manipulation framework that lets us act like a user using code, which will be the basis of the bot. Then we're going to go through the Apple website manually just to understand how a common checkout works for an iPhone. And then we're going to simulate that entire process using our framework and using code, test it, code again, test it, code again, and keep repeating until we finalize our product and then we'll sell it to customers. The reason I love Puppeteer so much, guys, is because of how you can literally type in the browser using your code, you can click an element, you can do a bunch of browser manipulation abilities. You can also make the browser headless, which means you won't actually see the browser, but everything will just happen in the background. It is very, very powerful, and there's so many resources on Puppeteer. Like, if I look at Puppeteer.js examples, so many examples, and there's so many YouTube videos on it, so any beginner who doesn't even know how to code that much can literally be nice at Puppeteer. All right, so now it's time to just go through the site and do our beginner assessment of it. So we click iPhone 13, all right, we hit color blue, 128, no trade. So we see the first page has a lot of things we gotta click. And remember, we have to simulate all of this, like all of this. Wow, this just keeps on going. Five button clicks just to get to the checkout page. This is important because Again, we need to know exactly what we need to do to make our bot act like how a human would if they were to buy an iPhone. And then we got place order as our final button. All right, so the site itself doesn't look too complicated, but there are a lot of buttons we gotta click. And in the standard input boxes, that we have to type information in, but we don't really see anything too complicated, which is a good sign. All right, so the first step is just to automate this first page. And this has like a lot of things we gotta click. We gotta figure out which color we want, which of these sizes, many options for each one. It's not just one button continue. So the number one thing you do when you create any checkout bot is you first see how good the site security is. And the best way to check that is to see, can you inject JavaScript into the browser and select what you want to select. So for example, let's say I want to click this iPhone 13 uh, button right here, right? I can click it like, you know, with the regular mouse, but the main thing is, can I click it without actually clicking it using the browser's code? What I mean by this is, if you go on developer tools, you go on console, right? All you have to do is use basic JavaScript to somehow select this uh, button right here. So the way to do that is first, you got to go to the button, Okay, get a, a, some sort of way to identify it. Copy this value right here. Add an attribute, copy. And we do document dot query selector. Selector is basically an attribute or a way to identify an element on the page. So we're trying to identify this element right here. So we do input, and that thing was value equals six one inch, right? You see right here how it's highlighted? So now, so we got a selector, and what, we, what do you want to do? You want to click it. So we just do dot click, and if this works, that means we can now use Puppeteer JS to just inject direct JavaScript into the browser, which makes it super, super quick. Let's see if this works. And the first page is done. So we were able to go through the entire first page using JavaScript, but now we actually got to put that into code. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called async function. Add to cart, pass in the page object. And we're going to use puppeteers page.evaluate function. 
What this basically does is it allows you to inject JavaScript directly into the browser you're operating on. So all we have to do now is just copy every single line that we had. So boom, have that, and then we're gonna have a nice, you know, quick timeout, just so it's not too fast. Let's say like one second. But you can obviously make this much lower, like only milliseconds when you actually want to sell this to a client. But for now, we can just you know keep it one second. And now you just repeat this process for all those ones we found earlier. Gotta run the bot. So so we go straight to the browser. Let's maximize this. See, it's clicking by itself. Still clicking. Still clicking by itself. Hands free. Hands free. Click the button. We'll click the button. Let's go. Apple don't got anything on me. I'm straight cooking, Tim Cook. We were able to successfully add this iPhone to cart without touching anything ourselves. So now we just gotta repeat this process until we get to the delivery page. All right, so now we're on the delivery page and all we really have to do is just type in whatever we need to in these text boxes right here and then click this button. It doesn't look too hard. And as long as you use a page.type method that Puppeteer offers, we can really choose whatever we want to type in to whatever box. For example, the first name box, if you get this selector right here and I put Ritesh right here, Puppeteer will now type in Ritesh into this box like this and it's like magic. We do have a problem and that's the fact that there's already a zip code in here. So if we were to type out our zip code, let's say it's 21228, it will do something like this, which is not what we want. We, have, we want to delete this old zip code and then put in like the new zip code, 21228. Luckily, Apple isn't the smartest and if we just change our zip code, they will automatically update this box right here. So we don't have to automate that because it's already automated by their website. So that actually helps us. So we're actually about to use Apple's security and functions to our advantage how exactly would we take this out by ourselves because remember we have to do using what code what a user would do in real life so if i were to delete the zip code if i double click backspace and then put in my zip code it'll work so now all i have to do is use puppeteer to click this twice and then just type whatever because if i click it twice it'll highlight it that can overwrite it that's it that's all you have to do it's at times like this I feel like Albert Einstein. payment section works on a lot of sites is that you have this outer document right but then you have something called an iframe which is like an inner document that a website may place in its overall web page so that it prevents other like software other third-party softwares from being able to access that inner document slash iframe so I imagine Apple did the same thing and there's really only one way to find out if you get this attribute if you were to change the value of it, it's not going to work. It's going to come out as undefined just because we just can't access the element since it's most likely in an inner document because it's an Apple website. So Apple's going to have that high high top security, you know. So uh, Caesar versus null right now, but just do input ID equal. And it's going to come up as null. Watch. When I do dot value equal, let's put a credit card number in. So like this, it's not gonna work, guys. I guarantee, because it's Apple security. There's no way they're gonna mess up this bad. Well, I guess I'm mistaken. Tim Cook's really letting me cook his million dollar website like this? This is just, in 4K quality too? Come on now. All right, guys, it's the final test. We're about to run the bot and see if we're able to automate the entire thing. Hmm. 
Nani? Oh my goodness. Okay, so now what's gonna happen, it should reject the order because it is a fake credit card number. But as you can see right here, yep, it's a failed card. But if you put your real credit card number, you will have checked out whatever product you want. This means that we were able to successfully create a bot for Apple website that checks out any single Apple item you want. This one was for iPhones, but you can outsource those for any single product. This is actually crazy. We were able to get past app security, which was like pretty low in the first place. But we were able to automate Apple.com, guys. Better smash that like button because honestly, I did not know if we would be able to do this. But we were able to get past Apple.com and fully automate it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Check the description below so you know how you can learn how to create your own checkout bot. And now, we can get this checkout bot we made and sell to a bunch of people. Because a lot of people are going to want iPhones. So this can be priced at like $2,000, $3,000. And you guys can literally sell this like crazy and change your life. Now you guys have to comment down one thing if you made it to this part of the video. We beat Apple.